Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to share you some information that maybe will be useful for you because I know a lot of people looking for that information, for that solution. How to get full HDMI 2.1 specs either on Linux with AMD GPU or because you need for whatever reason using DisplayPort because you want more monitors or whatever reason. Um, so I've made actually this post because I find a way Actually, it's not my solution, but I can confirm that it does work. That's why I'm making this video, because there's actually quite a lot of confusion. And for a very long time, I was sure there is no way to make it work. And I make this post on Reddit showing that it actually works. Uh, and it's actually this one converter, uh, probably the only converter in the whole world that does work. And again, why would you do it? Because, for example, you want two TVs yeah, with full specs. Even if you have NVIDIA GPU that have no problem with that, uh, you need two HDMI and you run out of HDMI ports. Like most GPUs have only single HDMI port. So that's maybe a reason why you need that. Another reason is like you are on Linux and you have AMD GPU. That's another reason like that affects me. Actually, I have two TVs. My setup is double TVs, not this one here. Actually, I love this setup. I have a little bit different layout, but I have two TVs connected to my PC. That my main monitor and a side monitor, but also like a horizontal. And I love it. But it's a little bit challenging on Linux with AMD GPU. So I was looking for a solution and I didn't believe this solution. The reason, guys, is this one, HDMI forum. By the way, such a... I, they couldn't find more idiotic name. Every time I he hear HDMI forum, I think of like a user forum exchanging information. And I was thinking, oh, users didn't allow HDMI drivers on Linux because open source. Stupid name, but that's their business model. So kind of makes sense. Imagine they open up the drivers and they cannot collect the fees for using that. But I hope people start switching to DisplayPort because it's just, just better and open, so it's better. So guys, there are a lot, a lot of DisplayPorts, like different converters, and I've got from Cable Matrix, but it's not this one. Just make sure, it looks very similar, but it's not this one. It's the much more expensive, this one here. Funny enough, $25, very expensive. It says DisplayPort 1.4, to 8K HDMI, not HDMI 2.1, because I think it's slightly different. It's like close, but maybe not necessary. Or maybe they cannot use the name. I'm not sure. But look at this. VRR not supported. They really making sure that VRR is not supported, that the customer knows that. So the information is here. Another information is here. VRR, G-Sense, pre -sense are not supported. And here, does this adapted support VRR, FreeSense, G-Sense? No, it does not. So they clearly really make sure. And guys, you go to Amazon, the same information. By the way, I bought two of them. Yeah. And they also making sure VRR not supported in few places. But if you go to reviews, a lot of people said it does work. Some people said it does not. And that's the thing. It's not 100% guaranteed. It's close but not 100. Um, so I'll show you in my case. Now, when you go to Cable Matters, by the way, you can download Cable Matters firmware update tool to enable VRR, it says on Windows, but yeah, actually you enable that on Windows because the tool for doing that works only on Windows. But when you use the Windows to update the firmware, uh, then it works on Linux as well. But in my case, it came with correct firmware. So VRR was working out of the box for me. And just to let you know, guys, with many TVs, you need to, in the settings, activate everything to make everything ready. Like I have Samsung TV. And in my cases, and in my case, I had to make sure I'm clicking general, external device manager, and activate input signal plus this had to be on and for vrr i had to make sure i'm in game mode 
and only single port that allows me to do all that is HDMI 4. Only this one port. This is actually a little bit different because it's for 8K uh, TV, but this settings actually is what I had to do. And on my high sense TV, I don't think I had to do anything. So there are more converters. There's another converter I bought. Funny enough, this one is very, very good. And as you can see, it's VRR, yeah, works with VRR. The thing is, it does not, which is another confirmation that we live in a simulation. Because this one says it does work and it doesn't. The other one says it doesn't work, but it does. Okay, I have no words. It doesn't work with VRR, but it's more stable. Like everything else, it's actually this one here. It's from Ugreen. It's very good, but no VRR. Another thing, guys, the cables with HDMI cables are a nightmare, and especially with some TVs. Like my Hisense doesn't really care what cable I'm using, but my Samsung is so extremely picky. So I ended up with this super expensive fiber optic, uh, almost 40 pounds for three meter cable. So I've got this one just to make sure, because with any other cable, I had like random black screens. Even with normal HDMI, just, just HDMI with Windows, no other problems. I had a lot of actually problems. Uh, so I've got this cable as well. Also, guys, just to let you know. So I've took a few screenshots because this is from Windows. Um, this is Windows 11. So with Hisense, I've got full specs 4K, 144 Hertz with FreeSense Premium on and full RGB. By the way, because it's a converter, there is a chip inside. I think that's how they get all the drivers working. And I think they pay in HDMI forum for, for the drivers. There can be a mismatch with communication. Like your system may say one thing, but your TV can say a different thing because there's a di different signal actually going out. One signal going out from your PC to the converter, but converter, send maybe different signal to a TV. So I will show you what I mean. So that's what the uh, Windows reports, full specs. Yeah, I'm happy with that, full specs. And for, this is Windows 11. Unfortunately, with Windows 11, I couldn't get 120 Hertz on my Samsung. But I get FreeSense Premium Pro. But on Windows 10, I had full specs with 120 Hertz. Beautiful guys regression. Everybody loves Windows 11. I love as well. I've lost 20 hertz, 20% 20 of yeah, my specs of my TV specs. Microsoft is brilliant. I don't know how, how they done it. It's some magic, but yeah, my TV got slower because of Windows 11. Beautiful. Super happy with that. So again, what I mean, some TVs can show you the, the whole specs. Yeah, like they show you HDMI 4. Yes, 4K, 120 Hertz, and but not every TV can do that. So HDR10, yeah, what kind of HDR? And RGB, which means full uh, chroma 444. Now your settings on system may, as I said, may say one thing, but it's good to confirm with your TV if your TV can show you that. Actually, I had to change the firmware on my TV to actually reverse to have all this information. And that's what I mean. Look, my Linux shows full specs, but I had to confirm with TV, it, it is not full specs. The chroma is lower, 420, an 8-bit uh, color, when the system shows 16-bit colors. So as you see, it's not always, the thing is, it usually doesn't matter. Like this looks fine on a 4K screen and especially when you scale, you make it bigger. It really doesn't matter. I cannot tell the difference. There is a slight difference, yes, but it's not that big of a deal. But it's a very big deal on my Samsung because on Samsung, if I don't have full specs, I've got random black screens and nothing I can do. Like it's very difficult to change actually chroma subsampling on Linux. I don't even know how to do it. 
So if it's if it's set incorrectly, you, and you it's very difficult to change. Like this one doesn't work for me. Like I can change RGB range to limited, for example. It doesn't help me. I will get random black screen if I using just HDMI port. So for me on a Samsung TV and it's my main screen, I hundred percent need a good converter. Either one of them, but one of them gives me VRR or free things. One is not that doesn't. And uh, this is actually interesting because it randomly change between VRR and free things. But it doesn't matter. It, it's not a big difference between them. So VRR, yeah, full specs, and yeah, occasionally I have free things premium like that. Full HDR works. Now, the thing is, guys, what I said, it's not 100%. I think it's close to like maybe 95%. And occasionally I have some glitches, like maybe like visual glitches or the HDR doesn't look properly. And what usually helps me is to unplug in and replug in and then usually fix everything, but not always. And as I said, some people, even with this converter, they cannot make it work. However, maybe if you don't need VRR, you need everything else, but you don't care that much about FreeSense or VRR or G-Sense, the U-Green one, I think it's more stable. Or the Cable Matters one, but with the other newer actually firmware that removes VRR. But it makes it a little bit more stable with a little bit better work in HDR, more stable image, less glitches. For me, I'm actually lucky because it works um but it's not guaranteed and it's risky because it's quite expensive you know 25 pounds for such a simple thing but yeah i just wanted to share you guys because it's probably the only one converted in the world that have pretty much full hdmi specs on linux with h uh, with amd gpu and maybe you are one of those crazy guys that want like crazy setups you're using tv because whatever, you know, you want to make your life happy. You are a crazy person. You make your work a little bit more fun. I like my TV. I like big screen. This is like, this is my screen over here in front of me. That's why the camera is so high. I'm looking up because I'm, I'm using a TV as my screen and I love it. And yeah, this one device solved my problem. And yeah, I just wanted to share it with you guys because maybe you are also one crazy guy like me using a tv with your pc so yeah guys thank you for watching and see you in the next one